Hi everyone, Peter here from Flow High Performance, and in this video we will cover what influence training and exercise has on fat loss. First, let's quickly recap some fundamental information that we established in the previous two videos on this series. Basically, for significant fat loss to occur, we need to be in a calorie deficit over time and lose weight. However, we want this weight loss to come from fat mass rather than lean mass like muscle tissue. Therefore, this video will cover how training can help us maximize the proportion of fat loss as a percentage of total weight loss and how exercise may be able to expend more energy to lose weight more effectively. There are two primary forms of exercise that trainees can perform to assist with maximizing fat loss. These are resistance training and general physical activity. Let's now cover how these can help with fat loss. First, we have resistance training. Resistance training has the primary role of maintaining or potentially increasing muscle mass during a calorie deficit. If trainees can maintain muscle mass during a period of weight loss, then the majority of weight loss will come from body fat, which is what we want. Most people will want to carry as much muscle as possible anyway for aesthetic appearance or functional use. Either way, the stimulus for muscle growth or maintenance is going to be through resistance training. Without resistance training, there is no reason for muscle to be kept. Rather, it will probably decrease as a result of the calorie deficit. Therefore, to maximize fat loss, trainees should ensure that they are following an effective resistance training routine. So with resistance training, can muscle growth occur during a deficit or is it only possible to maintain muscle mass? It is commonly assumed that muscle can only be maintained at best during a calorie deficit and muscle growth will only occur during a calorie surplus. However, this idea has recently been called into question. This research review concluded that it is certainly possible to gain muscle in a deficit, even for trained lifters. However, the likelihood and magnitude of recomposition occurring is influenced by many different factors. Generally, a less experienced lifter with a solid nutrition and training protocol are more likely to see a recomposition effect while a more advanced lifter with poor nutrition and training practices are less likely to experience a recomposition effect. Regardless, trainees should still do their best with their nutrition and training interventions to try and provide the most anabolic environment possible during the constraints of a calorie deficit. Another indirect way that muscle mass can assist fat loss is through its effects on basal metabolic rate. As we discussed in the previous video, muscle is a more metabolically costly tissue than fat. So the more muscle mass we have, the higher our basal metabolic rate will be with all other factors being equal. If trainees were to lose muscle tissue, their basal metabolic rate will probably decrease and overall energy expenditure will be reduced. This means trainees will have to eat in a more aggressive calorie deficit, making the weight loss more difficult. However, if trainees were able to maintain or even increase muscle mass throughout a weight loss period, energy expenditure through basal metabolic rate should be maintained for the most part. The other form of exercise that can assist with fat loss is cardiovascular training or non-exercise activity thermogenesis, otherwise abbreviated as NEAT. Let's now cover both of these forms of exercise and how they may influence fat loss. First, we have cardiovascular training. For the purpose of this video, we will define cardiovascular training as exercise specifically aimed at improving cardiovascular endurance. This would typically include modalities such as running, cycling, rowing, or any other continuous activity. While cardiovascular training can be an effective way to increase energy expenditure, it could also cause some other issues if performed irresponsibly. There are two primary factors trainees need to be concerned with regarding cardio training. Let's now cover what these are and how they may influence fat loss. First is due to the interference effect. The interference effect is the phenomenon where concurrent aerobic and anaerobic training may blunt each other's adaptations. It is well established that endurance training can certainly cause an interference effect for strength and power adaptations, but evidence on the interference effect for hypertrophy is limited. This research review found that aerobic training seems to blunt hypertrophy adaptations from various mechanistic standpoints, but there is limited evidence of this interference effect directly being seen on hypertrophy outcomes. However, strategic implementation of cardiovascular training may mitigate or even completely eliminate the potentially negative consequences of aerobic training on hypertrophy adaptations. 
Firstly, this interference effect only seems to be apparent in lower body adaptations rather than the upper body, since most cardiovascular modalities primarily involve the leg muscles. So trainees only really need to be concerned with separating cardio training from lower body lifting, rather than upper body lifting. Furthermore, the interference effect is only really apparent when cardiovascular training is performed in close succession of resistance training. So trainees can simply separate cardio training from lower body lifting by at least six hours, but preferably up to 24 hours. And lastly, this phenomenon is only really influenced by actual cardiovascular training rather than recreational activity. So trainees can minimize the interference effect by ensuring cardiovascular exercise is low intensity and low volume rather than traditional endurance training. This is important to minimize because like we mentioned, we want to preserve as much muscle mass as possible during a calorie deficit so that weight loss is primarily from fat mass. And the other potential negative effect cardiovascular training can have on fat loss is due to the recovery cost of training. Cardiovascular training can be highly fatiguing, especially if performed with high volumes or high intensities. This may limit overall time and energy, which could otherwise be allocated towards more resistance training. Performing more resistance training will increase the chances of muscle retention or growth, and therefore allow a greater proportion of weight loss to come from fat mass. Once again, this suggests that easy low intensity cardiovascular work is preferred in most cases over high intensity endurance training. Another form of exercise that can influence fat loss is NEAT. This refers to movement which is non-intentional, but rather consequential of daily activity. This includes movements such as walking around the home, fidgeting, head movements, and any other unintentional movement throughout the day. So rather than performing specific cardiovascular training, trainees can also strategically try to increase NEAT as a way to increase energy expenditure. This could be done by walking or cycling for transport, performing housework, performing yard work, or even going for a recreational walk. NEAT is probably more desirable for fat loss goals compared with cardiovascular training to increase energy expenditure. This is because NEAT basically eliminates the two primary issues with dedicated cardiovascular training. NEAT is easy and low intensity compared with cardiovascular training, which by our definition involves dedicated training aimed at improving endurance adaptations. This means that there is a lower recovery cost to most forms of NEAT and the interference effect is essentially non-existent. So trainees can increase NEAT to increase overall energy expenditure without significantly impacting hypertrophy adaptations. A simple way to quantify NEAT would be to use a step tracker. This can allow trainees to get a rough gauge of their NEAT levels each day and to adjust activity levels according to how they are responding to the weight loss intervention. So what practical recommendations can we conclude from all of this information? Well, there are two primary forms of training which can impact fat loss while dieting. These are resistance training and the combined category of cardio and NEAT. Resistance training is essential to either maintain, minimize losses, or even increase muscle mass during a calorie deficit. This will increase the amount of fat loss as a total proportion of weight loss. Furthermore, cardio training or increasing NEAT may be a viable strategy to increase energy expenditure to help with adherence to a calorie deficit. It is recommended that increasing NEAT should be the first priority. Then, if NEAT levels are not sufficient, additional cardiovascular training may be included in the overall training regime. It is recommended that cardio should be of easy, low-intensity work and separated from leg training sessions by at least 6 hours or preferably up to 24 hours. Thanks for watching and hopefully you got something out of this video. Remember to subscribe if you haven't already.